This is a lecture on Haskell patterns for Comp360 programming languages at North Carolina A&T State University. <laughs> the second Haskell programming assignment and the last Haskell programming assignment is due this Friday, uh, April 10th by midnight. Here's the material you should be reading in Haskell. You don't have to read the entire thing, just these sections. As we mentioned before, Haskell provides several primitive data types. Integers, as you know, ints in Java and C++. Integer is very large numbers. You can get to uh, very large integer numbers. Doubles, as in Java, bool, char, same thing. There are type classes, groups of uh, types that you can use together. EQ are those that can be compared, such as letters, uh, numbers. You can't compare functions. Or things that have an ordering, you can put in order. Uh, show, no, show, read. Num are numbers. Uh, that can be integers, doubles, integers, all the others. You can define the uh, parameter types and the return types using uh, type classes. Here, we could say that the sum of square method has a parameter and a return type that is a number. It doesn't say whether it's a double, integer, or integral, or any of the other types. It's a number. And so it's a, it takes a, a list of numbers and returns a number. You can write multiple definitions of a function, and Java will execute them in the order in which you put them in the file, depending on which one matches the parameters. Uh, you, you can only do this if you put the Haskell function in a file. It does not work in the interactive version of Haskell. The parameters are generally listed as variables that are used in the function. You can also put constants as the parameters. And if the function is called with a that particular number or value in that parameter, then it will use that version of the function. Here's an example using the ever famous Fibonacci example. Here I've written the Fibonacci in the simplified version of one line, you know, with the if and the else statement. But you can also write it in a simplified version at the bottom, where we instead of putting n as the parameter, we put Fib 1. Well, Fibonacci of 1 and the Fibonacci of 2 are 1. So we have uh, two lines for that. And then we have the Fibonacci of n. But we don't have to worry about the if and if then else statement because we've already defined the Fibonacci of 1 and 2 above. A common thing you'll see in uh, patterns is a empty brackets or an empty list that says if you call it with an empty list, this is the which, you should execute. In this version, if my sum, which sums the uh, numbers in a list, if the list is empty, then the sum is zero. Otherwise, uh, you have a parameter there, a cat, and it will sum that. That way, you don't have to have an if else statement in the function. You simply say, if it's empty, it's zero. Otherwise, call this recursive function. Try this. Try writing a Haskell method that takes a string with the binary numbers, zeros and one, and returns the decimal value for that binary number. Pause the video until you figure this out. Here is a possible solution. OK, of course, it takes a list or a string <coughs> Uh, and returns a single integer. When the string is empty, it returns a zero. Otherwise, it says, well, if the last, we do this starting at the rightmost character, moving to the left, and for each character, we take the value one or zero, and we add that to two times the next value, because every place in a binary number is two times that of the place to the right. So if the character is a one, then we use the number one, otherwise zero, that's the only choice. And you add that to two times the recursive call to the 
string without that last character. Remember, the order is important. You have to put that empty set first, because if you do it the other way, it doesn't work. In order. If you call it and it executes in order, it will try to call the bin to decimal where cat is an empty uh, string, and then when you try to call last on it, it'll get an empty string. It won't work at all. You can also put patterns that uh, use the head and tail of the parameter. Whereas if you put a colon to split a variable or a, param a single parameter into the head and the tail, that way you can say, if the head is this, then the tail is that. You can either specify constants as the head and the tail, and it will execute that particular version of the function when you have those values, or you can simply use those two different variables as that parameter. Here's an example. Again, we're doing these sum of the squares of a list of numbers. Uh, what takes, again, it's numbers. You have a list of numbers, returns a number. As before, if the list is empty, it returns a zero. Otherwise, we've split the list into two values. The head, which we call cat, and the tail is dog. And then now all we have to do is uh, square the cat and then recursively call the function on dog, which is the tail of the string. You can split it th into three parts where the you have the first part, which is the head of the string. And then the next part is the head of the tail, which of course is normally known as the second element of the string. And then in this case, cat is the tail of the string. So if you had a function and you want to take the second character of a list, or, well, of a string or a second element of any list, then you split it like this and ant is the head bird is the second one and cat is wherever comes after that so that's a very simple way to take the second element of a list since we didn't really care about the values for the head and the anything after the second character we can put don't care variables or underscores underscores indicate that there has to be some value in this position but we don't care what the value is and we will not be using the value in the function here in our simplified function that takes the second or returns the second character of a string or a second element of a list we don't care what the first element was or all the elements after the second so we indicate those with underscores that's for me because i really don't care the underscore is just a placeholder uh, try this try writing a Haskell function that returns the sum of a list of lists. We've done this before, but now try doing it using a pattern. Pause the video until you have a solution. And here's a possible solution. Again, the parameters are a uh, taking a list of numbers and returning a number. Again, empty list is zero. We uh, and then we split the the list if it's not an empty list to the head and the tail and then we just simply sum the head which is the first element that our list of lists would be a list itself and so we use the sum function to uh, sum all the numbers in the li initial list of li inside the list and then we call sum list and the rest of it this makes it a lot easier because you don't have to do the head and tail method calls inside the function definition Haskell also allows you to put a, a expression in the parameter list. Here we have a method or a function that takes one parameter score, and we have several uh, expressions. You know, where square, score is greater than or equal to 90, and then the method returns the string A or B or C. There is an otherwise, which means if none of the previous uh, expressions were true, then it returns the otherwise statement. So in this way, you can avoid doing a lot of if and else's in the method. And here's a more complicated equation where instead of giving us the score, we give the, the number right and the total number of 
possible square. And we calculate whether the value is greater than 90 or 80. There is a where statement in Haskell where you can go where at the bottom of a series of guards and there you calculate the value. Here we've calculated the score based on the parameters right in total and then that score is used above to determine which of the versions it will call. So it will first calculate score in the where statement and then use it above in any one of the uh, particular parameter calls. Here's another example where we calculate multiple values in the where. Uh, this particular function determines if a sphere of a given radius is bigger than a cube of a given side. Uh, so it takes a bunch of numbers. They have to be floating point numbers. And so it takes two floating point numbers and returns a character string, whether it's bigger or and so in the where statement, we calculate the value of cube and we calculate the value of sphere. It's important to note that uh, some things have to line up in Haskell, that all these characters have to line up. The vertical bars before the guards have to all be aligned and the W has to align with the vertical bars. Also, in the other expressions, they have to line up. And you have to use spaces to the left here. Do not use tabs. It has to be spaces. This can be important uh, with some, uh, I use Notepad++, it likes to put tabs in for me. No, don't use tabs. Use a series of spaces. It doesn't matter how far you indent them, but you need to indent them the same number. Be sure not to use. Be sure to use spaces, not tabs. Statements in the while clause must align. Be sure to keep reading or near the end. The second and last Haskell programming assignment has been posted on Blackboard under quizzes, tests, and assignments. It's due by midnight on Friday this week, April 10th.